గుడ్ ఈవినింగ్ థ్యాంక్ యూ అందరికీ వెల్ ఐ నోటీస్ వన్ థింగ్ ఎర్లియర్ ఇన్ ఎనీ ఫార్మల్ సెటప్ వెన్ అ పర్సన్ వాజ్ స్పీకింగ్ అండ్ ఇఫ్ సంబడీ వుడ్ లుక్ ఎట్ ద టెలిఫోన్ ఇట్ వాస్ కన్సిడర్ టు బి రూడ్ బట్ నౌ వెన్ సంబడీ ఈస్ లుకింగ్ ఎట్ ద సెల్ ఫోన్ వైల్ యూఆర్ స్పీకింగ్ యూఆర్ జస్ట్ హోపింగ్ దట్ ట్వీటింగ్ అండ్ రీట్వీటింగ్ అండ్ యూ నో డూయింగ్ వాట్ నాట్ సో ది ఎంటైర్ సెటప్ హస్ చేంజ్డ్ ఐ బిలీవ్ విత్ ది అడ్వెంట్ ఆఫ్ సోషల్ మీడియా సో హ్యాపీ టు బీ హియర్ సో హ్యాపీ టు సీ సచ్ యంగ్ ఫేసెస్ and very energetic that too and prateek thank you so much for having all of us here to have this uh, very important conversation bridge india i hope uh, really brings about many more such conversations to the table good luck to you uh, virendra sharma ji the most senior member of the parliament and always has been a friend of india as uh, manju ji called him father of all the indian communities here uh, we have literally seen uh, Viren Sharma ji take the effort to travel to India to have the discussions with various state heads various member of parliaments because not many people do that you know to take that extra step and put that extra effort to actually go to ground see people meet people i truly appreciate your friendship uh, towards the causes that india takes up sir thank you so much and uh, manju shol hamid councilor former mayor thank you so much I heard you were a fiery speaker and a person who has no iota of fear in you and you speak your mind uh, please keep rocking keep doing that thank you so much for being here today and um, Uday Nagraju uh, founder of uh, AI Policy Labs and uh, hopefully we'll see you in parliament of UK sometime you are from my land proud proud of you that you are able to make certain inroads into the political system here um, Dr Nero Agujabo uh, breaking all the barriers he is the first uh, how would i address it politically colored or african american african american um uh, formal special advisor to uk prime minister honorable theresa may i'm very happy that you are here and hopefully we'll get to speak and discuss on various other issues uh, thank you so much and the occasion today is uh, that india has passed a revolutionary bill which we are hoping that will bring many 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 more women into the parliament today of course the number is it 78 with the passage of the bill we are hoping that 181 more women will join the parliament first of all as our custom and as our tradition goes whoever worked for this bill starting from uh, honorable deva gowda ji in 1996 to honorable sonia gandhi ji in 2010 and to shri honorable narendra modi ji in 2024 i sincerely thank all of them from the bottom of my heart to making this bill a reality uh, this is not just politics but this is the respect these people have shown to the women of this uh, great nation uh, we are the most populous country today we are the world's largest democracy and uh, if we were to leave half of our population at home it was certainly not going to help our country and we realized that all the parties realized that all the all of the leadership realized that so that is how i believe this bill became a reality and in fact uh, we just it's very interesting to know a little bit about uh, the background towards this bill while the constitution was being created in the 1950s after the british left us in 1947 during the 1950 constitutional debates many women leaders like sarojini naidu many of them in fact said we don't need quota for women you know we fought shoulder to shoulder with you during the independence movement and we will survive in the political arena and we will uh, come into the parliaments and assemblies so they refused to have quotas because the quotas for the marginalized sections like scheduled castes scheduled tribes was discussed and it became a part of indian constitution in 1950 when we uh, in, uh, you know enacted the constitution so women then uh, were so confident because they were a part of the indian independence movement so they refused they said we don't need quotas well uh, that <laughs> feel good factor faded away very quickly by 1970s when women realized that okay we are not being given any positions in any of the political parties no member of parliaments no women um, you know making space into assemblies etc then the discussion started that maybe women should get quotas so from 1970s in india there has been this constant discussion and 1972 i believe is a year when united nations uh, theme of that year was to discuss the condition of women in india 
So for the first time, I believe government, the then government of India uh, did an extensive survey on the condition of women in India. At that point of time, more and more women leaders, more and more men and parties realized that not enough attention is being given to women's issues. It could be health, it could be education, it could be political participation, it could be economical participation. So that is when the Honorable Geeta Mukherjee ji and the whole of the CPI, CPM party, they had a major role to play, uh, especially the AIDWA, AIDWA, All India Democratic Women's Association. So they did play a great role. So it's not about one single party playing the role. It is about every leader realizing, understanding that unless and until we carry our women with us, we're not going to progress. Well, the advocacy continued from 1970s to, and it was uh, constantly there. Many women did a lot of dharnas. Uh, even in my district headquarters, I could remember in my constituency in Nizamabad, in 1990s, many women uh, did the dharna. But the then governments did not uh, move. I mean, we could not move that uh, needle somehow. In 1996, I'm very proud, there was a coalition government. When Deva Gaudaji first became the prime minister, he said, let me make this effort. Let me bring the women's reservation bill. He tried. Then subsequently Vajpayee ji tried, then Sonia ji tried. Ultimately, in 2024, now this big bill has become a reality. Well, now it is called uh, Nari Shakti Vandan Abhiyan. It is the 128th uh, amendment to the Indian constitution which brings this bill into force. And I believe uh, for the future generations, 19th and 20th of September is going to remain the most important date for uh, you, you know women bill that was passed. And uh, interestingly enough, as, an in, as Indian custom goes, and, in, and the occasion today is uh, that India has passed a revolutionary bill, which we are hoping that will bring many, many, many more women into the parliament. Today, of course, the number is at 78 with the passage of the bill. We are hoping that 181 more women will join the parliament. First of all, as our custom and as our tradition goes, whoever worked for this bill, starting from uh, Honorable Deva Gaudaji in 1996 to Honorable Sonia Gandhi ji in 2010 and to Sri Honorable Narendra Modi ji in uh, 2024, I sincerely thank all of them from the bottom of my heart to making this bill a reality. Uh, this is not just politics, but this is the respect these people have shown to the women of this uh, great nation. Uh, we are the most populous country today. We are the world's largest democracy. And uh, if we were to leave half of our population at home, it was certainly not going to help our country. And we realized that, all the parties realized that, all, the, all of the leadership realized that. So that is how I believe this bill became a reality. And in fact, uh, we just, it's very interesting to know a little bit about uh, the background towards this bill. While the constitution was being created in the 1950s after the British left us in 1947, during the 1950 constitutional debates, many women leaders like Sarojini Naidu, many of them, in fact, said we don't need quota for women. You know, we fought shoulder to shoulder with you during the independence movement, and we will survive in the political arena, and we will uh, come into the parliaments and assemblies. So they refused to have quotas, because the quotas for the marginalized sections like scheduled castes, scheduled tribes was discussed, and it became a part of Indian constitution in 1950 when we uh, in, uh, you know, enacted the constitution. So women then uh, were so confident because they were a part of the Indian independence movement, so they refused. They said, we don't need quotas. Well, uh, that <laughs> feel-good factor faded away very quickly. By 1970s, when women realized that, okay, we are not being given any positions in any of the political parties, no member of parliaments, no women, um, you know, making space into assemblies, etc. Then the discussion started that maybe women should get quotas. So from 1970s in India, there has been this constant discussion. And 1972, I believe, is a year when United Nations uh, theme of that year was to discuss the condition of women in India. So for the first time, I believe government, the then government of India uh, did an extensive survey on the condition of women in India. At that point of time, more and more women leaders, more and more men and parties realized that not enough attention is being given to women's issues. It could be health, it could be education, it could be political participation, it could be economical participation. So that is when the Honorable Geeta Mukherjee ji and the whole of the CPI, CPM party, they had a major role to play, 
uh, especially the AIDWA, AIDWA, All India Democratic Women's Association. So they did play a great role. So it's not about one single party playing the role. It is about every leader realizing, understanding that unless and until we carry our women with us, we're not going to progress. Well, the advocacy continued from 1970s to, and it was uh, constantly there. Many women did a lot of dharnas. Uh, even in my district headquarters, I could remember in my constituency in Nizamabad, in 1990s, many women uh, did the dharna. But the then governments did not uh, move. I mean, we could not move that uh, needle somehow. In 1996, I'm very proud, there was a coalition government. When Deva Gaudaji first became the prime minister, he said, let me make this effort. Let me bring the women's reservation bill. He tried. Then subsequently, Vajpayee ji tried. Then Sonia ji tried. Ultimately, in 2024, now this bill has become a reality. Well, now it is called uh, Nari Shakti Vandan Abhiyan. It is the 128th uh, amendment to the Indian constitution which brings this bill into force. And I believe uh, for the future generations, 19th and 20th of September is going to remain the most important date for uh, you know, women bill that was passed.